No, it's not the Open University, although you'd be forgiven for thinking it was. These library pictures are here to illustrate that in the 21st century, we are going to run out of fossil fuels. So we need to think of new ways of generating power sharpish. Most of them seem to involve electricity, which has never really been much use when it comes to running a car. So what are we going to do? These houses have been built to have as little impact on the environment as possible. They use very little energy, they recycle their waste and they collect their own water. But they've only cost the same to build as the kind of conventional mock Tudor little executive detached residences that Prince Charles is so keen on. So why can't the car manufacturers make a motor car that's environmentally friendly and affordable? Well, a couple reckon they have. And here they are, the Toyota Prius and the Honda Insight. Sexy, aren't they? Yes, another eco car. But it seems every year and every motor show, every manufacturer has at least one eco-friendly, never make it within a million miles of a showroom concept. But if these cars are going to work in the real world, they have to drive like real cars. So do they? It's a funny futuristic looking uh, vehicle, this Honda Insight. Although it does remind me of my first car, which was a, a Citroen Ami with its skirted uh, rear wheels. And those rear wheels very skinny. And of course, that's one of the uh, ways in which Honda have managed to produce a vehicle with incredible fuel economy. They're claiming up around sort of 60, 70 to the gallon, or we, we found it rather less impressive than that. It's got a very low coefficient of drag and a very high power to weight ratio. The panels are made from either aluminium or plastic. It's got special lightweight wheels, the carpets, the seats. Someone has been around this car with the sort of zeal which Colin Chapman used to apply at Lotus. The chaps of Honda have been around this car looking at every aspect of it, trying to keep the weight as low as possible in the interests of fuel economy. And there are one or two problems with that. One of the things that you do is you produce a car which is quite noisy to drive because there's very little in the way of sound deadening. And so, although we've got very, very skinny tyres, there's quite a lot of tyre noise and quite a lot of engine noise because what you'd do normally is just you'd squash all of that with plenty of sound deadening material. But the problem is, it weighs its weight, sound deadening material. It's unwanted weight. So the chaps at Honda have got rid of it. They've also got rid of the rear seats <laughs> uh, because that's where the batteries live for the electric motor which assists the 900cc three-cylinder petrol engine. Performance is very lively, to be quite honest. Uh, the throttle's reasonably responsive. And then you've got this display here. It's a bit rollerball or Death Race 2000 down here. And it's, as I say, it's quite lively. It spins up to a perfectly respectable speed, although it is quite noisy. So if you've been seduced by the Citroen-esque shape of the Honda Insights, then you can have one for £16,500. If that sounds expensive, consider this. Honda lose a packet on every one they sell. It's funny you know how these cars reflect the character of the company that created them. This is the Toyota Prius. And the last thing Toyota are ever going to do on any car is lose money. Toyota have taken a slightly different, to perhaps a more realistic approach to the business of building a hybrid car, building and selling a hybrid car, because they've actually shifted 40,000 of these Toyota Priuses already. It's basically a, a five-door hatchback with a 1.5 petrol engine and a rather clever electric motor and generator strapped onto it to assist it because when you look at the uh, statistics it's a 1.5 litre petrol engine but it's only putting out 55 brake horsepower which is pretty miserable when the Prius is setting off it's only using power 
from uh, the batteries using the electric motor to drive the front wheels. Then as soon as the load uh, increases, the petrol engine kicks in. When you take your foot off the throttle, it turns the kinetic energy that you're generating by continuing to move forward into electrical power, which it sends back through a generator and stores in the batteries. And it also uses the energy that's generated in braking and stores that in the batteries as well. And they say that this is especially fuel saving in the kind of stop start traffic that so many of us have to endure in our towns and cities and on the M6. So if stop start motoring is the only kind you do, then you have my deepest sympathy. But you'll probably find the hybrid system on the Prius quite useful. However, out on the open road, the novelty wears off and fuel consumption goes up. Toyota are trying out all kinds of different ideas on this Prius and I think it might be because they realise that the hybrid nature of its propulsion system probably has the least longevity of all the ideas they're trying out here. have here is some old ideas given a fresh lick of paint, a makeover if you will, and presented as brand spanking new. Bristol were building aluminium body cars in the 1940s. Minis were big on the inside and small on the outside in the 60s. And Citroen have always built slippery cars. Of course the distinguishing feature of these two is the incredible mileage they deliver courtesy of their hybrid engines. Trouble is, technology's caught up with them and the new breed of super efficient petrol and specifically diesel engines give nearly as good mileage but they're cheaper to buy, cheaper to service, more fun to drive. Basically, these two have been caught up by time and unless you're one of those weirdy beady environmentalists, they're a complete waste of space. But if you are, then what are you doing driving a car, you evil monster? <laughs> <laughs> 